Welcome to the Homeless Youth Project. I'm Ron Austin. And the Homeless Youth Project is a pan-left productions project uh, in a partnership with the Carlos G. Figueroa Foundation. Uh, the project, the purpose of the uh, Homeless Youth Project is to uh, inform the uh, public of Tucson of the realities of the condition uh, of the dreadful conditions of homeless youth that are living in our city. We will be producing a documentary tentatively named uh, Homeless Youth Project Tucson, Arizona. We'll have a public forum in a downtown venue and we'll invite you to come see the documentary and get information that you normally do not receive from the mainstream media. Uh, so we, we actually, as I said, we want to convince you that you need to bring about a change, that we need to bring about a change in the condition of homelessness uh, with, uh, with our youth. And, and I have a guest today. Uh, my guest is Arby Thomas. He has two projects, one which is, uh, at, which is present at the time, uh, which is about to uh, happen, and another one in the offing, and his projects are, are Missing Children and Runaways. Welcome, Arby. Hi, Ron. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, why don't, you, why don't you tell us about your project? Another thing here is that, thing to note is that his projects is related to ours because uh, the Homeless Youth Project is about missing children and it's also about runaways also. Go ahead. Well, hi. Uh, my name's Arby Thomas, and... Um, there, I'm having an event. Uh, it's a candlelight walk in remembrance of runaway children. Uh, November is National Runaway Children Awareness Month, and thanks to the generosity of the Christ Presbyterian Church off of Broadway, um, they have allowed us to uh, utilize um, part of their uh, church uh, front area as a staging area uh, to have the event. Uh, the event is scheduled for November 3rd, uh, at 6 p.m. Um, so if you're able to come, you know, please come. Um, um, parking is available at the Wilmot uh, Mall, which is just a short walk from the actual church. Um, the event will, uh, walkers will start walking from the church down Broadway um, and down to Rosemont and then back to the church. Um, at the end of that, um, anyone who may have a uh, child who has run away um, uh, will have the opportunity to, to share their experience um, and their hopes uh, with everyone else. Um, also, uh, if you are a child who has run away, there will be a, a jar there uh, if you want to... Um, you know, uh, basically send out uh, uh, just a little note to your uh, parents, um, just to say, you know, I'm alive, I'm okay, you know, or even I want to come home, you know, that would be a nice stepping stone. Um, you know, just write your name, contact information for your parents, you know, and drop it in a jar. You know, um, I can be the bridge between the two of you and contact them and just, you know, say whatever you want me to say. So Arby, so uh, what, what, what do you expect the result to come from this, this march of yours? Well basically the purpose of the march or walk uh, is just uh, to let people in the community know uh, that uh, there are children uh, who have run away uh, who are in the community you know um, and um, you know just to, to recognize that uh, it is an issue. Hmm. Okay, that's, that's, that sounds like a really good cause. And you know, uh, Runaway Kids is part of uh, the homeless youth pictures. It's, it's part of the big picture. I mean, you know, with, with my project, I'm trying to cover as uh, much as uh, the 360 degree picture of what homeless youth are about. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, I can't cover it all. And it's a good thing that you're uh, doing this because uh, you're kind of filling in the gaps of it that, that I don't have. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to help out. Yeah, you're right. So, 
uh, and and you got another project coming up, yes? Yes, I do. Um, basically, the second project that's coming up is um, I'm going to be um, talking more about uh, all the issues that are involved with missing children, whereas the first um, project deals with runaways, um, there are several different categories that children come under when they're missing. Um, there's uh, uh, family uh, and parental abduction, there's uh, missing by uh, unknown circumstances, um, lost children, missing by catastrophe, but there's other categories. And so um, the other project will be uh, discussing uh, those issues. And I'd also like to uh, bring to your attention that on your screen uh, you see a telephone number and you can call in and ask either Arby or myself or both of us a question or make a comment. So uh, have you uh, have, have you in the progression of doing uh, getting ready for your project or either one of the projects have you uh, come in contact with any missing children or any runaway children? Um, actually, I um, during the um, process of me doing the research for uh, my my uh, project, I did run across a gentleman uh, who had just turned 18, but he informed me that he had ran away himself uh, when he was 14. Uh, okay. So, uh, I, I believe that uh, that in the process of of attempting to acquire some statistics mm -hmm. uh, for your project that you ran into some sort of roadblocks? A few. <laughs> uh -huh. A few. Right. Um, uh, I had first tried to um, get the statistical information of um, missing children uh, for Pima County uh, through uh, the uh, Pima County uh, Police Department um, and um, basically came up, came up empty. Um, I then tried to get the statistical information through um, the uh, Sheriff's Department and that hasn't panned out uh, anything uh, yet as well. Mm. Um, I actually, uh, one, one of the agencies I did contact, which was, um, let's see, um, the Arizona Department of Public Safety, um, they gave me some information, but it wasn't really detailed. Um, but they did suggest that I um, contact uh, other agencies, uh, which I had tried and again came up empty. Mm. And you know, the this the the, the picture. Of, I mean, you know, what Arby is talking about is something that uh, about the establishment and. The the youths that I have come in contact with uh, that are homeless, uh, they run up against brick walls uh, from the establishment. I mean, okay, let me give you an example. For uh, uh, There is a particular group of youngsters which I've been in contact with, and uh, they had their uh, belongings stashed in a particular place, and the police... The police came along and they pepper sprayed all of their stuff, okay, all of their belongings, all all of those things that connect them to uh, families and maybe even humanity. You know, they have pictures, IDs, uh, medication, mementos of, of the good life of living in home and such of that sort. Uh, they pepper sprayed them so that uh, heavily pepper sprayed them so that they uh, would be of no use to anyone. And so those youths, I mean, you know, they, they lost those connections. I mean, they're already homeless, okay? And I imagine some of them are uh, imbibing in drugs and alcohol. But, you know, they, they had connections to, uh, uh, to their families and connections to being human uh, that were lost due to the establishment not understanding and not treating them as they, as they should. Another example is that uh, me and my photographer, uh, we went, we did uh, the, uh, uh, in doing the Homeless Youth Project, uh, we did the Homeless Youth Project in the 
tunnels, which you can see on uh, YouTube. If you go to YouTube and uh, uh, look up homeless champion, one word, uh, you can see a homeless youth project in the tunnels. And one of our visitations there where these youths were living, with the, the second visitation, the uh, police uh, or the city, let's say, had gone in there with uh, fire hoses and sprayed uh, the tunnels down and sprayed all those youth belongings and destroyed them and washed them down the tunnel. To me, that's atrocious. To me, that's that that I I, I can't say any the right words to say how I feel about that. Okay, I mean you know. Those, that's, that stuff that was destroyed or coated with pepper spray or washed away were the, were the last linkages uh, of, of those kids with society, with family, with, with, with some sort of belonging. And, and it's an atrocious. Uh, have you ever uh, heard anything of that sort, Arby? No, I haven't. You haven't? Yeah, it's a sad thing. Yeah, right. It's, it's really sad. So you're... Uh, your problem, your your project with uh, with the runaways. Um, have you received a lot of help? Otherwise, well, um, as far as uh, putting together the uh, the project, um, uh, some companies have um, offered sponsorship. Um, uh, we uh, we had received some uh, certificates from Harley Davidson of Tucson. Um, we had uh, just today um, the um, uh, uh, the uh, Isabel Salas um, uh, Volunteer Center uh, had uh, given us uh, some candles and T-shirts um, and uh, some water uh, for the event. Um, sadly, though, uh, they did tell me that um, their center was closing uh, today, um, and so for that, I ask anyone out there. Um, to um, pray for the family um, and wish them well. Um, we uh, we've also received uh, some sponsorship from um, uh, Miracle Springs Resort in California, um, and from uh, uh, Revolve Store uh, in uh, Tucson. They're a Volvo repair shop off of Fourth. Uh, um, so thank you all for your support. Um, although, um, you know, there's still, you know, a long way to go right. um, before the event. Um, still need to find some food. Right. Food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you heard uh, that, didn't you? Okay. <laughs> and if if yeah. you can come forward with uh, some food for the event, I'm sure I'll be, would, uh, uh, would more be, be more than willing to accept it. And you probably should give them your information. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, you know, that would help, you yeah, know. Yeah, it would help. Huh? Um, uh, if you'd like uh, more information or to contact me, um, you can uh, send me an email at info at family tree np um, dot org. Uh, just send me an email and I'll get it. And I, I would repeat that if I were you. Oh, okay. so the email address again is info at family tree in p dot org and don't forget if you have any questions about either the home youth project or arby's missing children or runaway uh children uh, project uh there is a number on your screen uh you can call and ask questions or make a comment if you choose cool mm -hmm. so Arby, um, what led you in this direction? What, what this was? Uh, you have some family members or something that, uh, that were runaways or are missing, or, or what was the, what was the thing that brought you into this? Well, you know, I I, I felt that it was uh, a passion of mine that I needed to follow, and um, so um, you know, uh, working in uh, with a uh, an organization called called Family Tree. Uh, you know, uh, I move forward. Okay. So, so in working with Family Tree, you came in contact, or in some way, or 
or heard a lot of news about runaways and missing children? Um, I had, I had heard uh, more. Um, uh, you know, I had heard stories about runaway children. Um, I had heard stories about parental abductions. You know, um, and so um, that's you know that's my passion. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's at least. Um, you know, um, one person in every household out there that someone knows someone, you know, that has ran away. You know, if you haven't ran away yourself uh, in the past, um, you know somebody. Well, you know, I know myself. Uh, what brought me into uh, this sort of project was that I'm formerly homeless myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, at the time of being homeless, I was an active crack addict. Mm. Okay, I've, I've been clean for 16 years now, um, maybe 17 or 18 years. I'm not sure. I'm not one of those people that keep track of his <laughs> anniversary date. I understand. Right, as long as I'm clean, that's all that counts. Mm -hmm. But when I was out there on the street, I came in contact with a considerable number of homeless youths. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I listened to their stories. I mean, uh, they didn't affect me at the time because I was homeless and I was a crack addict and my home focus at the time was my next hit. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I got clean and stabilized that, I, that my mind went back to those incidences of those, uh, uh, those kids talking to me. And they told me some horrendous stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, horrendous stories about adults who used them and abused them uh, and, and all they needed was a shelter or some food or maybe some love, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised, well, not really surprised, but, you know, if we don't do something, we, the public of Tucson, if we don't do something about the condition of uh, children who are homeless in Tucson, people who run away, mm -hmm. people, children who are missing, uh, we're gonna have a whole generation whole generation of, of children growing up that are going to hate us because we did not intervene in their lives. You know, we all know that youths cannot raise themselves. And that's what homeless youths are doing. They are raising themselves and raising each other. Okay? We know they can't do this in a wholesome fashion. You, you can imagine all the mischief that they are getting into without uh, the influence of a responsible adult, okay? And as they grow older, they're going to be a drain on society. They're going to be dra a drain on law enforcement. They're going to be a drain on the health care system. Uh, they'll be, drain, be a drain on our taxes. And more than likely, uh, it, it, more than likely, many of them will become criminals or psychopathic or or uh, to totally antisocial, mm -hmm. and uh, you have no idea. We we have no idea what youths out there in the street right now may have in his head the cure for cancer, mm -hmm. or or, uh, or 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 some scientific phenomena uh, which hasn't been solved as of yet. Okay, or an, another youth that may have uh, possibly some a uh, beautiful music in in their head uh, that uh, possibly uh, would be enhanced by, okay? We're letting all this, all this talent go to waste. But it's not just about talent. It's about humans. Mm -hmm. It's about human beings. It's about uh, people, everybody, everybody having the piece of the pie, so to say, okay? And these kids are nowhere near getting to have a piece of the pie. Um, I think the phone's ringing. Oh. Hello, welcome to uh, the Homeless Youth Project. Gentlemen, uh, seems like a very, very well purposed cause, and I, I commend you on what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I have to ask, uh, have you set up places for these kids to actually uh, get a meal and, and sleep or, or stay overnight or in, in, anything like that? Well, uh, there are 
a number of agencies in town that facilitate these processes you're speaking of. There's our family services, there's youth on their own, stand up for kids. Uh, there are many agencies. And what, also what happens with these agencies is they have outreach people that go out into the street and into the wash. They try to pull these kids uh, uh, in, into some sort of services. They take food to them, they counsel them, uh, and they do all they can in order to console them. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, right behind my house, I live at uh, Speedway and uh, Craycroft area. Oh, okay. They just opened up a new Circle K, and right after they opened that last week, you see an influx of a lot of homeless kids hanging out there late at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bumming money, you know, trying to get a next meal or something. So, uh, no, what you, what you guys are doing is great. I, I commend it. So, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, right now, uh, the, the, kid, the kids are the future. Mm -hmm. Right. The, there was a, the, the young man that I spoke with who told me that he had ran away when he was 14. Uh, he told me that one of the biggest issues he had when he was living on the street was food. Well, you know, it's bad enough when you're out on the streets and uh, you're middle aged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you're on the streets and you're young teens, you're young kids. You don't, you don't have, you don't have a clue what's going on. Yeah. You're looking for the survival, uh, you know, just the su survival, and you will believe anything anybody says. So. That's right. Okay, yeah. guys, keep it up. Good okay. job. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank Adios. you. Bye mm -hmm. bye. Uh -oh. Yes, and you know. He brought up a good point there that, uh, and, and you know, these kids, they're out there on the street, they don't have a clue, just like he said, mm -hmm. and they make a lot of mistakes, okay? Yeah. And that's why they, they run afoul of the law enforcement system quite often. And become victims. And become victims, right. Uh, and uh, also, you know, like he said, you know, they, they, they tend, well, the, the thing is, is that Youth, when they're on the street initially, uh, may believe uh, anything they hear, as he said, but what happens is that they become hardened, mm. okay? They, can be, they become hardened to the point that later on, uh, during their homeless condition, yeah. uh, even those outreach workers from the various agencies that provide services to these kids have a very difficult time getting through to them. Mm -hmm. because there are many adults that have abused and used them, mm -hmm. okay? So what happens is that you, you just can't go out there and uh, pull one of those kids into housing, offer them services. You have Sometimes you have to go out there often and just gain their trust. And, uh, and, and you know, you bring food to them, you, know, you provide uh, whatever services that the kid wants to avail themselves of. And... Uh, uh, but you have to go out there sometimes, maybe a dozen times, mm. uh, to uh, gain their trust enough for them to trust you to bring them into some sort of housing wow. or uh, some sort of establishment thing. They really do not trust the establishment, mm. okay? Because the establishment establishment treats them bad, okay? Just as I mentioned about uh, the uh, youth that uh, uh, had their uh, belongings pepper sprayed by mm -hmm. the police department, mm -hmm. uh, by, uh, the use that had their belongings washed away by the combination of the police department and the fire department. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are, th there are things of this nature that make the uh, youth total, uh, totally untrusting mm -hmm. of anything that smacks of, of the, of the mm -hmm. system, or even adults for that matter. I mean, I've, personally, I have talked to homeless youth mm -hmm. when, when I was homeless. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're quite often very introverted mm -hmm. and very much inside themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by the time they got to me, uh, they didn't want to really talk to me, but mm -hmm. quite often I being homeless and they being homeless, uh, they, uh, mm -hmm. they felt that uh, they could, uh, uh, they, or they felt the need mm -hmm. to to release mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it was that uh, going on in their life. So quite, uh, quite often I ran into stream of consciousness thoughts. In, in these last seconds, I'd like to ask everyone out there who's a parent to tell your children that you love them. Thank you.
to the home uh, for watching the Homeless Youth Project.